Click on the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. So I am here to take the economics part and uh, <clears throat> I am part of Vision IAS for the last uh, four and a half years and uh, taking the economics portion for both the prelims as well as mains point of view. Okay. So normally, you know, the courses started by the vision are being called as a foundation course where, you know, we are being completing the entire syllabus for both prelims as well as mains point of view. Because first of all, you know, it is being very difficult to segregate like, like which part is for prelims and which part is for mains. Because normally a same topic which is being given in the syllabus of mains by UPSC they're asking question in the prelims examination. For example, if I'll tell you one thing, like in your main syllabus, you have one topic called subsidies, you know, that you need to read from mains point of view. But last to last year, a question asked by the UPSC from the subsidy area, under that they targeted one topic called neem coated urea. So neem coated urea is a thing, you know, which you're being using in the farming. So though it is a topic of mains, but they're asking question in the prelims. So that's why, you know, when it comes to segregating it, it is comparatively difficult. <clears throat> Moreover, in the prelims examination, you know, the syllabus given by UPSC is highly undefined. But yes, in case of mains examination, whatever syllabus is being given by UPSC is being very well defined. As you know that you people have how many papers? Four papers. GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 paper. As the name of the title of paper is what? General studies. In Hindi, you basically say Samanya Adhyan. So general studies means ki whatever topics mentioned by the UPSC in the syllabus, you need to prepare from general perspective. That means you're not supposed to have any kind of specialized knowledge. So some people, you know, who are being reading certain things in very deep, it is actually not required. And to know at what level I need to study and where I need to stop myself, a broader idea you can simply get by seeing the questions of last year. Okay? That whatever kind of question asked by the UPSC in the mains examination, the prelims examination, if you see the level of question, <clears throat> you people will be able to judge that I need to read this particular topic at this level and then after that I need to stop. Because in UPSC examination, you know, the biggest challenge in front of candidate is what? That I need to understand till what level I need to study various things. And when they're not knowing it, what they are doing, they're simply wasting their time. And you will find so many stories, you know, about the toppers who cleared in the second attempt or third attempt, they, why they were not able to clear in the first one, the main issue is that they were not able to complete each and everything. So do remember, here in this examination, you're not supposed to do a specialization you're supposed to know things from general perspective. And for that thing, as you people are being planning for 2020, so at least give a week to understand the syllabus of the examination, ki what kind of topics are being given by UPSC. And the second thing that you need to understand, ki what level of questions, you're not supposed to solve the questions. You're supposed to see and understand at what level the questions are being asked. Because whatever book I'm going to choose to study something, I need to know ki whether this book is actually fulfilling my requirement of the examination or not. Are you getting? So unless until you people will not provide some time to understand the syllabus and moreover the, you know, the question pattern of the UPSC. And do remember, you're not supposed to see the last 10 or 15 years question paper. Just see from 2013 onwards when the syllabus of UPSC mains was changed. That means you're supposed to see 13, 14, 15, 16, and 18. Only last five years paper you're supposed to follow. Do remember. Now, in this PPT, you know, I'll simply show you ki what kind of things are being given by UPSC about your economic syllabus. So like as you can see here, the syllabus of prelims, as I said, is highly undefined. So they left open the entire topics by providing economic and social development. In economic, you have everything, banking, fiscal policy, foreign exchange, foreign trade, population, everything you have. 
social development, education, healthcare, sanitation, basic infrastructure, this kind of thing. So that means they're simply opening up that I can ask anything from these areas. Secondly, poverty, inclusion, demographic. Third, social sector initiative. That means what all initiatives have been taken by government, you know, to tackle the various social evils. Like for example, unemployment, poverty, sanitation issue, education, you know, and the reforms that you need in the other areas. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you see the syllabus of prelims, you can say just the three topics I need to complete. But if you see the pattern of UPSC, regarding the questions from different, different topics, then you will find these are very vast. So these are just the subdivision of the topics of prelims from different, different topics. Like you have population, employment, planning and development, national income, poverty, and the other topic. Some of the other year, they are asking question from different, different topics. So that means I cannot skip anything. Because normally what happens, you know, with the students, if I'm skipping something by thinking that this topic has been targeted by UPSC for the last two years, and this year they won't ask question. I don't know how they're being able to know the psychology of student, they will ask question on the same thing again. Are you getting what I'm saying? And if you think in this way, that this topic, UPSC is not asking question for the last four years, so I can skip it, because this year again they're not going to ask. Certainly you will get the question from that topic. So that thing actually very irritates you. Seriously, that is actually being faced by each and every student. Because when I'm skipping something, UPS is asking question from that. That means I cannot skip anything. If you skip, maybe you know you will get a question from that particular area. But yes, if you have a very good luck, then maybe you will have a better chance that whatever you have skipped, they're not targeting it. Are you getting what I'm saying? So syllabus is vast. Topics are good in number. When I see the weightage of economics in the last few years paper, you will find the weightage vary every year. But if I see the average, almost one-fifth of your paper in your prelims will come from this topic of economics. And seriously, economics is very interesting if you read it with example, if you study it in a simple manner. But if you read it, you know, in a theoretical manner, you will not understand and you will only feel that this is the biggest enemy of mine when it comes to preparing for UPSC. Because I can tell you, majority of you must be from science background. And you hardly have any knowledge about the economics. That's why, you know, this area, if you understand once, and if you have the basic knowledge, if you have the conceptual clarity, then whatever question asked by the UPSC, I'm telling you, are not tough. Like in history, you have to do mug up. Ki babar kaise mara, akbar kaise mara, uska beta kaun ta, uska pota kaun ta. Ye sab aapko yaad karna padega. But in economics, you're not supposed to mug up thing. You're only supposed to understand. So if your logic, if your concepts are clear, you will be able to answer it. And seriously, if you get a good hold over this subject, then you will score maximum in this. And you will find this portion as the most easiest one. Are you getting what I'm saying? So point is, I am not supposed to mug up things in this topic. I only need to do conceptual clarity. Secondly, if I see the syllabus of mains, then the majority of topic of economics you will find in paper number three, and some topic you will find in paper number two. Like for example, poverty, unemployment, and moreover, the international organization like WTO, World Bank that I need to prepare. Okay, So in total, you have around 19 topics that I need to cover. Like for example, we have Indian economy and issue relating to planning, growth and development, inclusive growth, government budgeting, then subsidies, then you have e-technology in the aid of farmers, then economics for animal rearing, then you have this food processing industry, land reforms, then industrial policy, technology mission, buffer stock, food security, all these kind of topics you will get. So in total, you have around 19 topics that you have in paper number two and paper number three. When I see the weightage, this is the weightage. You simply, you know, concentrate here. After the class, I'll give you my email address. Those people who need this slide, I'll simply send it to you. Don't worry about that. So just listen what I'm saying. You'll get the slides if you need it. So that is the weightage of economics in your paper number 
2 and paper 3 combined that how many question asked by the UPSC from economics portion. So 13, 135, 130, 150, 150, 185. Okay. So approximately the weightage is around 150 marks of question you will get. This year in 2018 they asked questions worth of 165 marks. That I've not mentioned here but I'm telling you this year they asked question worth of 165. So around 150 marks of question. That means 15% of your paper because in total 4 GS paper how many marks? 1000. And how much you have been getting from economics? 150 around. So 15% is being there is the weightage of <coughs> economics. Okay, now, after this I'll tell you in two ways that what all source you're supposed to follow for economics if you study yourself. And secondly, I'll tell you <coughs> how we are completing the thing in the classroom so that you will get a broad idea that how you need to complete yourself or how you will be able to approach when you join the institute. Both the ways I'll tell you. <clears throat> in the first case, see, four NCRTs. So you're not supposed to fo follow the old NCRT, only the new NCRT, and all the NCRTs are free available on the NCRT website. You have the name of book, you have the number of chapters that you need to follow. Why I said in beginning about the syllabus, because I need to focus only on the syllabus topic, and I'm not supposed to complete the entire NCRTs. So, you have the chapter number, one, two, three, and the final chapter in the name of food security, that you need to follow in the ninth. <coughs> in tenth, you have understanding economic development, chapter number one, two, three, four, and last chapter is called consumer right. In the eleventh NCRT, you can follow the complete one. In the twelfth NCRT, you need to follow chapter number three, five, and six, that's all. So what you can do for NCRT, simply download in your phone. You must be having smartphone with you, okay, so simply download the chapters in your mobile phone and whenever you will get the time read it because do remember these chapters will not make basics or they will not provide you basics these are very general things so many stories so many village stories and the other thing you will get in the first three book in the fourth book it is more of technical in nature so fourth you will not be able to understand much because here you have so many technical terms and that will be comparatively easy when, when you have the basic knowledge about economics. Okay? Four books that you need to follow. Okay? After that, you have the link also when I'll send you the slide, you can simply use that link for the purpose of downloading the chapters. Okay? After this, what all books you can refer? What all books you can refer? You have four books in the market. Okay? And all these books are for BCom honors, Delhi University, I think second or third year. You're not supposed to buy a specific book for civil services. Buy any one of these, not the four, any one out of four. So go to a shop, get the books, see the language, whatever book you will find that has been comparatively easy and good, buy that. Personally, my favorite is this one. The Indian Economy, Environment and Policy by I.C. Dhingra. This is a comparatively a better book, which I believe. All the books are thousand plus pages. You're not supposed to read the entire book again, I'm telling you. In the index of this book, you're supposed to mark the chapters. Those which are part of our syllabus. And you have a syllabus, how many topics? 19 topics, okay? That you need to mark. Once you will mark, you will be able to eliminate half of the book. Okay, so only half of the book you need to read and half you can simply skip. Do remember, do not get emotional when you study. Only read that. That is a part of my syllabus because I need to clear the exam in a limited time. And I'll tell you the importance of time in this examination after showing you this slide. Okay? Once you will complete this, this book is there for mains. But if you think that you don't have time to prepare or to read this book, you can skip. It is only an additional read. Do remember. There are two big books which are being normally asked by the students as a question in the class. Kisara, I have a book called Sanjeev Burma for the Indian economy. See, that book you can understand only when, when you have basics about economy, clear. If you'll buy it now, and if you don't have the basics cleared about economics, you won't be able to understand. 
So only buy it when, when you have your basics are clear. I am not outrightly saying buy it, though this book is currently under me. So I am the one who is being updating that book, and you will also find my name over this book, the latest edition. But the point is, I am not recommending the students because if the basics are not clear, you won't understand. Ramesh Singh, sir, second book. Obviously, I am coming to that. This book is very bulky. You will get a lot of extra content, which is not relevant from examination point of view. Like imagine, in case of inflation topic, you have around 19 to 20 different definitions for inflation that I am not supposed to know from the examination point of view. Okay, my target is what: read less and think about more, so that I will be able to write good answer in the mains. Okay. I am not supposed to do any kind of PhD for any particular topic. Do remember. So read only one thing. Even if you are reading that book, Ramesh Singh, that is fine. But try to eliminate those areas which are not relevant. Because no need to read thousand plus pages for this subject called economics for UPSC point of view. That you can do when you're doing things your own. Secondly. For updations, you can refer simply the current affair notes available on our website. You can download every month for free, and you can read it and update that content. One newspaper that is what Hindu. Secondly, in economics, if you want to do the updates in a comparatively faster manner, and if you want to be on your toes about economics all the time, so that you will not miss any update, I am telling you one simple shortcut here that how you can complete that. You must be having smartphones with you, all of you. Download the Economic Time app in your smartphone that is being available in your, you know, you can say your App Store and moreover the Google Play Store. When you go to the Economics Economic Time app, on left hand side you will find three parallel lines are being there. When you click on that, you will get a complete table. Okay? In that table, you will have one section called News. Click on News, you will have the sub topics. The third topic you will, sorry, the third topic, sorry, fourth topic that you will find here is economy. Click on that. Every day, whatever knowledge about the Indian economy, whatever news is being coming about Indian economy, you will get it here. There is no need to read the entire economic time paper. You will only waste your time. Only those news which are being given here. And out of these, only those which are relevant from my economics or you can say examination point of view. Like if you see the very first news, they are providing about several states opt to double GST threshold. A relevant thing from the prelims point of view. One lakh entries but one KYC project still a dream. You can read it because it's a part of your e-governance where you can provide as a update. Veggies face new Pests, low prices, rising input cost. No need to read. It is not relevant from my examination point of view. And that you can judge only when, when you have the knowledge about syllabus and the kind of question asked by UPSC. Third problem that is being faced by students is about, okay, sir, how I can prepare the budget and economic survey. Shortcut if I'll tell you about preparing the budget document. Budget, see, you will get so many institutes who will provide you the budget document in a very summarized manner. But economic survey, which is comparatively a bulky document, which is normally students are afraid of, what you can do in this, in each and every chapter of economic survey, you have boxes. Okay? Refer only that. Much more than you can say from our examination requirement. In the economic survey, what you need to do, you just need to refer the boxes in the chapter. Like in the chapter number one, you will find box number 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. 1 and decide ki whether this box information is relevant from the examination point of view or not, or whether it's a part of my syllabus or not. If you do this much, it is kind of more than enough from the examination point of view, I'm telling you. Your updates will be done, your economic survey will be done, your syllabus will be completed, and your Current affairs are completed. Much more, I would say. Secondly, if you join the institute, what I have done, I have purchased all these books. So I have a little books. And what I have done, I have made the handouts, you know, sell by referring the books. So it's simple. It's simple. Cut, copy, paste. No, CCP. 
cut, copy, paste. So that I've done from different, different books, which I found is a kind of a good one. Then various websites, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Ministry of Finance, then Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Economic Survey documents, budget document, various newspaper articles, whatever I found is being relevant from the examination point of view. I simply jot it down in my handouts. That you can get only when, when you join. So if you join, there is no need to buy any book, refer the handout, do the class notes, and do the current affairs, much more from the examination point of view. So I have compiled the notes in around 300 to 350 pages. And that notes, whenever I will provide you, will be completely up to date. There is, though, there is no need to update anything. Because in the books you will find, they are normally being updated once in a year. So if you are buying some book in the month of October, November, so you will find the contents are not that you know, kind of relevant from the examination point of view. So normally, whenever it comes to providing any handout before giving to the student, I'm simply updating it. If it is any kind of update is being there, then I'm providing you. So your work of searching content is being done by me, or have completed by me. That advantage you will get. Okay? And moreover, I cannot promise anyone about 100% content coverage. I can assure you that by through classes, you will be able to do well in your prelims and you will be able to do good in your mains. Because my target is what? In prelims, cutoff is around 55%. So my target is not to complete the entire paper in prelims. My target is to complete around 70 or 80 question maximum. Okay? If someone says, I will do all your questions and all of them will not come to me. Prelims is only for the sake of getting into the mains. In your mains paper, you need to write around 4,000 words. And nobody can write 4,000 words in three hours. I can bet on this. Because you have to think and you need to write. On an average, one normal individual, I would say, can write around 18 to 19 words in one minute after thinking and providing. That means the maximum paper that you can attempt is around 200 and 220 on a quality basis. Look, you can write anything to write, but what do we do? We have to write that we get marks. So imagine, if in mains you are attempting around 200 marks worth of paper, and in each and every paper you are scoring 50%, 400 you have to come in it. SMA, again, if you take that you are scoring around 125, because in SA you can complete the paper very easily. 125 plus 400 equals to 525, plus your optional, if you're doing good in your optional, and in optional, you can easily score 60%. Itne leke aayenge na, aap topper honge. Because by scoring 55%, you're having first rank. By scoring, you know, you can say around 50% something, you've been getting second rank. And majority of the people are between 40 to 50%. That means I'm not supposed to, you know, follow or run towards the quantity. I'm supposed to run about what? Quality. If you run towards quality in your paper, you will certainly do good. If you run towards the quantity, you will run towards the mistake and write such an answer which you will not get more than 30-40% of your paper. So if you attempt 250 and you get 30%, how much you will get? 75-80? But if you attempt worth of 200 and if you write very good answers, then certainly you will get sometime more than 50% also. So do remember, you people should concentrate on what? About the quality. So my notes and what I will do in class, I will assure you that in the prelims, you will be easily able to attempt around 14 to 15 questions in your prelims out of 20. In your mains, you can easily attempt out of 1 to 15 in your prelims out of 20. In your mains, you can easily attempt out of 1 to 15 in your prelims out of 20. If you have one question, then you can see that there is a question that we can't do. So there is no big deal in that. Okay? So there is no big deal in that. 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 So there is no big deal that you that is that should be your target you need to follow okay one thing which i need to tell you about the importance of time they get questions ke level to aapko pata hi honge aur jo aap dekhenge aapko idea lag jayega the questions asked by the upsc are more of conceptual and economics they're not asking you the dates they're not asking the data only the statement they will provide you and they're supposed and you're supposed to choose the right statement like in this they're asking about the frbm act okay in the second question, if you see, 
They're asking about the capital adequacy ratio. Again, a concept, not a fact. They're not asking you that how much capital adequacy ratio we are supposed to follow in India. Only the definition, and they're asking you to choose the statement. Okay? I'm not discussing the question. I'm just providing you the kind of question asked by the UPSC. Third, if a commodity is provided free to the public by the government, then again, a statement is being given, and you need to have your conceptual clarity. Then you can mark this answer correct. Are you getting? In your mains, if you see, the question is more about, you know, providing your opinion. Like in this, reasons, and then you need to analyze critically. Among several factors for India's potential growth, saving rate is the most effective one. Do you agree? Again, your thinking. That's why I said, in this examination, you need to read something. You need to understand something and think about it. Make your opinion. What are the other factors available? Women empowerment in India needs gender budgeting. What are the requirements and status of gender budgeting in our economy? Explain the salient features of Constitution 101st Amendment Act that is about the GST. They ask the question. Features, and then after that, do you think, as you can see here, again, your opinion? So UPSC is more finding those students who know things and they have their opinion on that. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this is why you have to learn, understand, and develop your thinking. Develop karni hai. कि अगर ऐसा है तो क्यों है? Okay, now one more thing which I want to tell you here about this examination. Like you people have the syllabus of the examination in the form of paper number one, two, three, and four. What I have done, I simply you know bifurcated the syllabus in terms of topics. So let me show you. This one. Paper number 1, 2, 3, 4 में जितने भी आपके topics हैं, उनको मैंने सिर्फ क्या किया है? उनको topics के हिसाब से divide किया है. The first topic is inheritance and culture, subtopics. Constitution, subtopics. Geography, subtopics. And then after that, <coughs> you have other things. कहाँ गया भाई? History of the world and society, governance and polity, and the other. Now, see, the syllabus is the same, but it has been redesigned. Why? So that you can understand that in one particular area, what all I need to complete. Because the syllabus is given to UPSA, that is, here and there you will find certain topics. But what I want here, I need to have a constructedly developed syllabus. Where I need to have an information that I have to history in history, and I don't have to do anything And by this, you will be easily able to remember ki what all topics I need to complete. Now, see, if we talk about topics, then you will find the topics in UPSC mains about 13 topics. You need to cover 13 topics. Okay? As you all are going to appear in 2020 only, and we are sitting in the month of January. That means you have 11 months of this year, and you have five months of next year. So, how many have you now? You have 16 months. 13 topics of GS you need to cover that we have mentioned here. As you people are from English medium, you also need to prepare the Hindi. Do remember, you also need to appear for your regional language. Northeastern people are not supposed to appear for that. So you have 13 plus 1 Hindi language paper. Plus you people will also prepare for your essay. Writing skills you will work on it. And then your two papers for optional. So in total you have 13, 14, 15, 17 areas that you need to complete. Okay? 16 month, 30 days every month. 480 days you people have for the preparation if you are talking about from now. If we divide this 480 by 17, that means currently each one of you is having around 28 days to complete one area. Ek topic ke liye around 4 hafte hain aapke paas. You have 4 weeks. So if you people will need unnecessary thing, if you people will simply follow the, you know, what do you say, the multiple sources to complete something, 
you will only suffer in the upcoming time. Make one thing as your base. Focus on that. Learn from that and then prepare. Okay? If we people are being sitting, let's suppose if we are going to start in April, when normally we start the start karte hai, this time we are being, you know, planning to initiate even you know, earlier because a lot of people are being demanding this. So, point is what? That time you will get only three weeks. चार महीने खत्म कर दीजिए अगर आप बात करेंगे मई से तो आपके पास करीब करीब तीन हफ्ते बचेंगे सो डू रिमेम्बर ईच एंड एवरी डे इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस एग्जामिनेशन आई वुड से इज नॉट टफ एट ऑल दिस एग्जामिनेशन इज लेंदी इट्स अ डोंकीज जॉब जितना भार ढो सके हमने कंधे पे वो ढोना है हमें ठीक है जितना जल्दी समझ जाएंगे कि आई नीड टू फोकस ओनली ऑन वन एरिया वन सोर्स एंड आई नीड टू कंप्लीट इट एग्जॉस्टिवली only as per the examination requirement, then you will certainly do good. And if you will listen to many people's things, okay? You will not make your own thoughts. If you only <coughs> listen to others and you will simply, you know, focus multiple. Now, you will make your friends who will be preparing for you. You will get that many seniors with you. Those who are being called as experienced UPSC candidates. They have some years of experience. They will start telling you multiple books, that this book is very good, 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 and you will buy them. And then you will start feeling pressure when you will not read it. Because you will see them in your room, books are kept in your room. I can bet on this, all of you, or 90% of you will buy the India Air book, for sure. But hardly 1% out of you will read it. Because it is so bulky and so boring, you will not read it. But if you tell a senior, you will buy it. You will buy it. So, do remember, buy selected book and for one subject, one book. Okay? If you do this, if you follow this, you will certainly do good. So those who need this, you know, slides and moreover this syllabus also, you can simply mail me on this email address, pratikjwe2001 at the rate gmail.com. Okay, simply mention that you need syllabus and slides, I'll send it to you so that <coughs> you can do things in a comparatively better manner. Now, if you have any doubts, about the preparation, you can ask. Uh, GB sir. Gmail, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. 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 Whenever you are joining the foundation course, as the name says, foundation course, that means we will initiate everything from very basic. For my classes, whatever I will cover, I'll start from very basic. So what I am following in my classes when it comes to completing topic, I'll first of all clear the basics, do the conventional area, then I'll connect with the current. Okay, that is what we are following. So don't worry. But yes, the three NCRT, 9, 10th, 11th, you can refer, because these are very general and you will get a broad idea that what is actually we mean by economics. And do remember, you're not supposed to read microeconomics. Microeconomics is not a part of our syllabus at all. We need to read only macro, okay? And macro is what? Entire economy. And economy means Indian economy. That we need to refer. Sir, newspaper ke liye dekhiye, sab se simple jo mene aapko bataya, economics ke update to aise ho jayenge aapke, jo aapko bataya. Secondly, if you talk about the Hindu, <coughs> in this syllabus, whatever you think will provide you update. This is IR, hai, science and technology, hai, economics, hai, governance and polity. Hai. These four broad, broad areas, you will get the updations in your newspaper. Focus on the topic, remember the topics all the time, and then focus only on the, that news which are being part of a syllabus. That's all. Sir, business space to roll jata hai, but usme news to sari relevant nahi hoti hai na? If you are doing this app, then you will have 15-20 minutes. You can simply eliminate that Hindu page. Because the news in Hindu is not very much relevant. Because you have an opinion, the general perspective, in your editorial page. But the economics page, you will not get a lot of news which is relevant from examination. So follow the app. Sir, it depends on the question. And the data in NCRT will be all old. So you don't have to bother about that. You are supposed to bother about the latest one. And moreover, all the data are not relevant from examination point of view. 
कौन सी सर सर ईयर बुक देखिए मैं तो रिकमेंड ही नहीं करता पढ़ने के लिए सर यू विल गेट ऑल दी डेटा इन योर न्यूज पेपर एंड दी वेरियस करंट अफेयर्स या मोर देन इन और डेटाज आप कभी याद नहीं कर सकते रट्टा नहीं मार सकते हैं डेटाज यू कैन सिंपली रिमेंबर वेन यू फॉलो दी कॉन्सेप्ट ओके एंड बाई कीप एंड मल्टीपल रिविजन विल बी एबल टू मेक यू गुड इन डेटा यू नो टू प्रोवाइड सम डेटाज इन योर पेपर सर वेबसाइट्स का क्या करना है आपको एक ऐप बता दो दी <coughs> बहुत सारे लोग बताएंगे राज्यसभा टीवी देख लो लोकसभा टीवी देख लो सब मैं सही बताऊं जो टॉपर होते हैं ना वो कुछ कुछ बताते हैं तो अगर अपने पूरे के पूरे प्रिपरेशन में उन्होंने एक बार भी लोकसभा टीवी देखा होगा ना वो आपको रिकमेंड कर देंगे अब सब लोग बेचारे पूरे साल देखते रहते हैं उसे <laughs> मैं आपको बताऊँ हमारे ग्रुप जब हम लोग तैयारी करते थे आई पास फ्रॉम डेली स्कूल My friends are from SRCC, Saint Stephen's College. सब दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी के पढ़े हुए थे तेरह लोग थे आज ग्यारह सर्विसेज में हमारे ग्रुप में <coughs> और मैं आपको बताऊँ कभी साल में एक बार उन्होंने लोकसभा टी वी देख लिया था जो टॉपर हमारे ग्रुप का जिसकी पाँच रैंक आई थी उसने एक जाके बोल दिया कि मैं लोकसभा टी वी देखता हूँ एंड द स्टूडेंट स्टार्टेड वॉचिंग यू नो लोकसभा टी वी इज नो नीट बिकॉज वट एवर दर डिस्कसिंग इन द लोकसभा टी वी एज अ डिबेट यू विल गेट इन द न्यूज पेपर यू ऑलरेडी हैव नॉलेज अबाउट दैट If if you still want to follow, then so many institutes are being working for you by providing the summary of that. Refer that. Why you need to waste one hour? ठीक है? देखिए जितना time बचाएंगे, जितने जल्दी सीख जाएंगे, you will be doing good for that. Sir, NCERT is not sufficient. You need to refer a book also. NCERT will only provide you very basic and very brief, nothing else. Okay? Even in your twelfth NCERT, you have only three chapters, which is <coughs> relevant banking, fiscal policy, and foreign exchange. Remaining is not being covered by NCERT, so you have to refer a book. So, <coughs> budget के लिए देखिए budget में पहली बात मुझे लगता नहीं कि बहुत सारी चीजें आती हैं जो हमारे examination point of view से relevant हैं. The only thing that you can follow in budget. <coughs> when the government is providing you the budget they have a one page called budget highlights jo unki website pe milta hai aapko keval wo dekh lijiye char panch page ka hota hai more than enough theek hai ji that is all from my side for economics okay all the very best and hope to see you in the classroom once we'll start the batch okay sir i provided you four <coughs> but i said out of four my favorite is ic dhingra uma kapila you can refer when if you have time kyunki us book mein you will get certain articles from different different economists of india like c n rajan sahab ho gaye yv reddy sahab ho gaye raghuram rajan sahab ho gaye manmohan singh sahab ho gaye in sab ne articles likh ke us book ke andar diye about some you know specific areas if you have time then you can read it and buy it only when when you will complete the economics portion because you won't be able to understand that book then okay chaliye all the very best thank you